He is known for being a British textile designer, poet, artist, fantasy writer, and socialist activist associated with the British arts and crafts movement. He was a major contributor to the revival of traditional British textile arts and methods of production. Recognized as one of the most significant cultural figures of Victorian Britain, his name is William Morris. In the world of art, literature, and social activism, one name stands out, William Morris. This British visionary was a true Renaissance man, excelling in textile design, poetry, painting, and writing. He played a pivotal role in the revival of traditional British textile arts and craftsmanship. But Morris's influence extended far beyond the realm of art. He was also a passionate socialist activist, working tirelessly to promote social equality and change. Born into a privileged family in Walthamstow, Essex, Morris developed a deep appreciation for medievalism during his studies at Oxford University. This love for the medieval era would shape his artistic style and philosophy. After university, he married Jane Burden and formed close friendships with prominent artists like Edward Burne Jones and Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Together with architect Philip Webb, they designed the iconic Red House in Kent, which became a symbol of the arts and crafts movement. In 1861, Morris co-founded the influential firm Morris, Marshall, Faulkner and Company. This company had a profound impact on interior decoration during the Victorian era, with Morris's designs adorning tapestries, wallpapers, fabrics, furniture, and stained glass windows. His dedication to craftsmanship and attention to detail set a new standard in the industry. But Morris's creative pursuits didn't end there. He also delved into literature, producing epic poems and novels that helped establish the modern fantasy genre. Works like The Earthly Paradise, A Dream of John Ball, and The Well at the World's End showcased his storytelling prowess and imagination. Beyond his artistic achievements, Morris was deeply committed to social activism. He founded the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings in 1877, advocating against architectural restoration that caused damage to historic structures. In the 1880s, he embraced anarchism and became a dedicated revolutionary socialist. Morris founded the Socialist League in 1884, championing the cause of workers' rights and social equality. His passion for social change continued until his final years when he established the Kelmscott Press, dedicated to producing high-quality, limited-edition print books. William Morris's legacy as a cultural icon of Victorian Britain is undeniable. He is celebrated not only for his artistic contributions but also for his unwavering commitment to social justice. The William Morris Society, founded in his honor, ensures that his legacy lives on, while his works can still be admired in museums, art galleries, and even in the production of his designs today. William Morris, a renowned writer, made significant contributions to the literary world through his poetry, fiction, essays, and translations of ancient and medieval texts. Starting his publishing journey at the age of 24, Morris established the Oxford and Cambridge magazine with his friends and financed it during his university years. His first volume, The Defense of Guinevere and Other Poems, became the first published book of pre-Raphaelite poetry. Despite receiving a lukewarm response from critics, Morris persevered in his writing endeavors. During the Hundred Years' War, Morris penned the notable poem, The Haystack in the Floods, which vividly depicts the farewell of doomed lovers Jehane and Robert in a rain-soaked countryside. Additionally, he wrote the Christmas Carol, Masters in This Hall, and adapted The Snow in the Street from The Land East of the Sun and West of the Moon in the Earthly Paradise, showcasing his versatility as a poet. In 1868, Morris met Iriker Magnusson, from whom he learned the Icelandic language. This newfound knowledge enabled Morris to translate Icelandic sagas, including The Saga of Gunlog Worm Tongue, Greta's Saga, and The Story of the Volsings and Niblungs. His translations were well received and further demonstrated his dedication to preserving and sharing ancient narratives. In the final phase of his writing career, Morris delved into the realm of fantasy fiction with his series of imaginative novels known as the Prose Romances. These works, such as The Wood Beyond the World and The Well at the World's End, broke new ground by being set in entirely invented fantasy worlds. Inspired by medieval romance, Morris's prose style captivated readers with its lyrical and enchanting qualities, making a lasting impact on the genre of fantasy fiction. Morris's influence extended beyond his own time, inspiring future fantasy writers like Lord Dunsany, E. R. Edison, and James Branch Cavill. His novels also left a profound mark on renowned authors such as C. S. Lewis and J. R. R. Tolkien. Lewis's Narnia series drew heavily from The Wood Beyond the World, while Tolkien found inspiration in Morris's reconstructions of early Germanic life in The House of the Wolfings and The Roots of the Mountains. Even James Joyce acknowledged the influence of Morris's work on his own writing. William Morris's literary achievements encompassed poetry, translations, and groundbreaking fantasy novels.
His dedication to his craft and his ability to transport readers to other worlds have secured his place as a prominent figure in literary history. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.